Hello everyone, welcome to our home and to our extended family. They have just come to visit, well actually they've come, they've been on holiday in the loft for the last <laughs> probably several years. But they've come down, we're giving them a little bit of a freshen up, especially for Christmas. Especially this guy, he is the main star on Christmas. This is the donkey that brought Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. Though he's a bit depressed because I've actually told him he's not in the story, in the original story at all. So he's not feeling too good this morning. But anyway, these are here for Christmas Day. Remember, 11 o'clock. Well, actually, we don't know the time yet. It'll be probably 11 o'clock on Christmas morning. I just want to make sure that the time doesn't clash with any of our local services. So it we'll, might be 8 or 9. We'll... Yes, it will depend. We'll we'll, once we've found out when people publish their Christmas <laughs> times, we'll make sure we're on a time when people aren't <laughs> on in church, if you know what I mean. So anyway, Kathy's going to read to us today. Reading from the book of 1 Samuel and chapter 2. And it says, But Samuel ministered before the Lord, even as a child, wearing a linen ephod. No, I didn't. <laughs> a linen? <laughs> He wore a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother used to make him a little robe and bring it to him year by year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, The Lord give you descendants from this woman for the loan that was given to the Lord. And then they would go to their own home. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Wonderful. Well, the little phrase that, that I want us just to think about for a moment before we have communion today, uh, and I can't actually see it. Uh, hold on, let me get my glasses on. It's the, just a little phrase in verse 19. She visited him once a year. Can you imagine this little boy just got a visit from his mum his mom once a year? But she brought with him a new cloak. Every year she brought with him a new cloak. I want to ask you a question about it. What size was the cloak? And uh, I mean, maybe you've thought about this before, but when I was in school years ago, I went to a, 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 one of the grammar schools over in Northern Ireland. It was one of the six royal schools, actually. So mine was a very posh school. But it had a special uniform and you can only buy the uniform in one place in Enniskillen. And so when people bought their uniform at the beginning of the year, that was it. You bought it and it lasted you the year. I mean, Kathy, I remember you're always saying at Easter time they got a new dress. No, obviously when you're older, it's fine because you don't really change in size that much unless the lockdowns had a big effect on you. But for a child, normally, you used to, what is it they used to say? It'll rise up with wear. Was that what they used to say? You'll grow into it. Oh, you'll grow into it. That's it. You'll grow into it. <laughs> Nowadays, of course, you like my jumper. This is a new jumper. This jumper was bought for me in Primark or Pricksmark. I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's probably the cheapest shop in the United Kingdom. And when I'm finished with it, I'll buy another one because it didn't cost an awful lot of money. But going back to my school days, hey, those uniforms... You can give it to Doug when you're finished with I it. I will give it to Doug. I'll send it over to Doug and Angie when I'm finished with it. That's a good idea. Or maybe one of these kids will have it. But what, what I'm getting at here is that it was very expensive to buy. So, so in other words, you would buy one that you would grow into. Now, here, Hannah... Only once a year she went to see her boy. He was a growing boy. What size did she take for him? If she brought something that fitted him, well, one month in, it's going to be too small. So she had to buy something that he would grow into. So maybe in six months, well, not even six months, because then he's going to have another six months when it's going to be ridiculously small. So she would have bought something that was far too big that he could grow into it. And that's the point of my story today, to going to grow into something. Here's the question I want to ask you. I know we've probably, most of us adults, we've done most of our growing as far as physics, physical is concerned. But let me ask you in this lockdown, and when you have time at the moment, what are you growing into? What's time allowing you to grow into? I want to encourage you. This isn't meant to be a, a, a judgmental thing. I'm asking you, when you've got time at this moment, as people seem to have more time because there's restrictions on us, grow into something. So if there's another language you can learn, grow into it. If there's a new skill that you can learn, 
grow into it. One of the things I've been enjoying doing because we're doing these things is taking up my guitar. You know, I've had a guitar for many, many years, but it has sat in its case, sat in its case for a long time. Now I take it out almost every day and I'm really enjoying learning some new things on my guitar. But the question I want to ask you is this, what are you growing into? Because we need to be growing into something. That's, I think, very important. That's just the point I want to make this morning. Challenging you to think about what you are learning that you weren't able to do before. Kat's going to read from Matthew chapter 26. <clears throat> and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he gave the cup gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins but i say to you i will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when i drink it new with you in my father's kingdom wonderful what a blessing it is to day after day to be able to break bread together. You might need to pause the video, get yourself ready, but let's break bread again today. Thankful that Jesus gave his life for us. You know, we don't know where this will all lead. We're, we're in new days, aren't we? This is Monday, the beginning of a new week. I had to ask Kathy earlier on what day it was because all of our days seem to be the same at the moment because the, the, the normal ritual is, isn't there. And so that can be difficult to manage your time when it all drifts one into the other. But every day we are taking this communion, just remembering that Jesus died for us so that we will be ready. That's something we're growing into so that whenever we come through this, when for me, the airlines open again, for you, whatever happens, maybe your job will go full uh, pelter again or whatever it is that we're waiting for, we'll be ready. When God calls us to speak to people, we'll be ready because we've grown into it. So let's take our, our bread today and share it together. Thankful that Jesus gave it for us. Let's eat together. After supper, he took the cup. And this is the cup that we that is prepared for us, that's set before us, and we set it before us day after day, acknowledging that today I need Jesus, tomorrow I need Jesus, but today is the only day I can live for at the moment. So let's drink together, thankful that he gave everything for us. Now Kathy's going to read a hymn today before we pray. Perhaps this is what it means to take some time to grow into something and it this hymn says take time to be holy speak oft with thy lord abide in him always and feed on his word make friends of god's children help those who are weak forgetting in nothing his blessing to seek amen let's pray together he's squashing the donkey oh sorry We'll have to give him a name. Maybe you can think of some good names for this fellow, but anyway, that's another thought. Let's pray together that God will be with you this week. Lord, I pray for all our brothers and sisters this week and today that you will bless each one of them, particularly those that are going through a time of struggle. And many people have, have difficulty, mental issues through this time. And I pray you'll help each one of us to, to rest ourselves in you, that we would take time to find you and, and to know you, and that we would grow in this time into you. You are our head, that we will grow up into you and that we would grow in other ways as well, that we would be fully equipped to do what you've called us to do. And so today, we just give you thanks and pray that you would strengthen each one of our brothers and sisters around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So God bless you and we'll see you again tomorrow. That's Tuesday and we look forward to being in your home once again. God bless you. Bless bye bye. You.